Which video game have you accumulated the most hours in? Counter-Strike 1.6 GO Just always been a comfort game I end up going back to because I started playing when I was like 12. Like the game just feels natural at this point. This game will never die. Age of Empires 2 On and off for 20 years. So much time spent with this one. Remember when MS Zone had ranked tournaments? Check out the AOE 2DE competitive scene on YouTube or Twitch. Ranked competitive matchmaking is great too. T90 Controller player and Litikor are all I need to enjoy a weekend. T90 is simply the most entertaining caster of our era. Tetris I am afraid to know the total number of hours over the last nearly four decades. Same here. Downloaded a touchscreen version of it a few years ago. But it just wasn't the same. Probably still wow even though I haven't played it for over a decade at this point. Why did you stop? It got too addicting. Yeah, just too much of a time sink. I ended up selling my account to a friend so it would be harder to go back to it. I ended up selling my account to a friend. How much did you get for it? I think it was 100 which was probably more than it was actually worth to be honest. Starcraft Brood War About 2 hours a day Almost every day since 1998 Edic thank you for all the awards Glad to see so many fans of this great game In the interest of saving you guys time Am I any good? No Haven't played ladder in over a decade I mostly play the use map settings games like RTD Poker Defense and other great classics My main during the latter days was Zerg Muta balls for the win baby I did the math and if you still played for 2 hours a day You would have around 16,790 hours which is two entire years of continuous playing. That's still a lot less than most WoW players. Stop playing WoW like eight years ago maybe. And I can't remember the official numbers but I had months on my main. And he was only about half of my total playtime. It's depressing thinking about how much time I spent on that game. Don't think of it as time spent. It was a hobby you were passionate about. Instead, relive the experiences and memories you made along the way. I don't play it anymore but I have lifelong friends that I would have never known without WoW. Factorio. I put in 3,000 hours just in vanilla and Modpix pushed me over 9,500 this year. Sitting at 12,758 total as of this post according to Steam. Factorio was my one pick for the game they should Ender's Game to use to trick us into solving real world supply chain issues while we think we're gaming. Spaghetti. The solution is always spaghetti. Egg drains are hard. I am just going to do a miles long belt to my copper outpost. Agree. The learning curve for a train is insane. Once you start understanding it. A whole new level of fun is waiting for you. Microsoft Solitaire. Remember the Space Cadet Pinball? This was the game. Most definitely Pokemon Emerald. I constantly replay the duck out of that game when I was kid. It still is my favorite Pokemon game to be honest. I've completed it three times now lol Elite 4 plus capturing the legendary Steven 3 Albanian Lex times I chose. Trico. I don't know but I just love Sceptile. Morrowind, first open world game I ever played. No quest markers so you just had to remember who and where or spend a lot of time in going through your basic journal in each city hoping there were enough details. Or just write them on a pad and paper. Not much on the internet to help except for fans on message boards. Then there was a cheat button combo to refill your health and magic but you were only cheating yourself if you used it because you get great XP if you didn't use it. Spent whole weekend in the winter playing that. So, my first and main Morrowind playthrough. I killed Chaos Cassades with no game prompt informing me what I had done. And I continued playing the game my way for months. Just exploring, killing, stealing, collecting etc. Then one day I am talking to a friend about Morrowind and they're going on about the story. I am all confused. What story? You don't just wander around and do random quests. They tell me to go to Bomber and find Chaos Cassades. He starts the main mission. So I go and find his house and there he is. Dead on the floor. Naked. Because I stole all of his things. 80 Plus hours of game time and absolutely no means of starting the main mission. Morrowind is an incredible game and I think about it quite frequently to this day. So, what do you do in that case? Morrowind was awesome because there was a backdoor method to complete the main quest. If you did it you missed a lot of story. But it was 100% doable to only talk to one important NPC and beat the main story. You do miss a lot of story. But what I liked was that unless you get lucky or spend forever running around, knowing the story well would clue you into how to go about doing this backdoor method. Oblivion. Your money or your life. Pay 100 gold. You're smarter than you look. Steal gold back. 
Super Mario World. I have no way to even estimate given it was the pack in and I was functionally poor. It was literally the only game I had for SNES for a year, possibly two. Even after that, I still went back and back. As life has progressed I've had every version of a compilation, emulator, Game Boy Advance, virtual console. I just keep coming back to it. To me it's not only one of the greatest games ever made, but it's also my childhood. And I feel happy every time I see Yoshi. Maybe my favorite game of all time. I still can't get the alternate exit in Choco Mountain very well. The one where you needed a certain amount of coins in a certain amount of time or something like that. The triple exit level if I remember correctly. Yes definitely a pain. The moment I got 96 levels unlocked was a moment I still cherish. I had spent hours redoing a number of different levels stranded at 94 clears when it suddenly twigged I had to do the false exit of the Star Worlds. It took me years to find the secret exit on the bridge. Beating it takes your down to the water where you do the level with all the sub-aquatic bullet bills and then to the topmost star point. That star sitting in the water was always such a mystery to me growing up. As a kid in the 1990s, I found the exit to get the vine down to Soda Lake only after hundreds of tries of flying from the beginning and trying to avoid the sauce to just before the first exit, diving below it and coming up just in time for the secret second exit. Recently, I challenged my teenage nephew to get to the secret exit. He did it on his first try by jumping with Yoshi below the first exit and then hopping off to the secret exit blew my mind that I never thought of doing that for the past 20 plus years. Diablo 2 minus LOD. Minecraft is a close second. I was looking for this. Yes, started playing D2 LOD before hitting double digits and still play it. Just the best. Kerbal Space Program. Edit I am stoked that I am not the only one. Anyone else start running the executable directly just to hide the hours from themselves. This is way too far down the list. The time it takes to actually become proficient enough to plan certain missions takes more time and practice than most games higher on the list. KSP is definitely an underappreciated masterpiece and in my top 5 of all time. You for nearly 4,000 hours. Ah, so you've almost beat the tutorial then. I am still trying to figure out how army man go there while not causing a revolt. I am still figuring out how army man go anywhere because of Fort Logic. Scarin. Yeep. You start playing and suddenly it's dark out and 6 hours passed. Worth it every time. Path of Exile. I've been playing on and off since 2013. Consistent updates really help suck me back in. I've probably spent about 300 hours every link on this game ever since Legacy League. Haven't missed a single one except high since real life issues happened. Now I'm back on track. Still no mirror. RuneScape. I am really curious how much time I spent in old RuneScape every day after school. In second fourth grade, I'd come home, call my best friend, and spend two six hours playing RuneScape with him and whatever friends we met along the way which weren't too many since we were stupid little kids. That and Minecraft during sixth and seventh grade. I ran a clan on the forums but we somehow had a lot of members even though I was a bit of a dick back then. The games I always think of for this question, though, are GTA and Skyrim. The answer is probably Skyrim, with GTA very close second. RuneScape is probably third. Age of Empires 2 is probably fourth. If you can log into your account, you can speak to Hans in Lumbridge who will tell you the age of your account. Minus 800 days played. Oh my god thank you for this. I've spent years wondering how much of my childhood was sunk into that game. Edit 1209 hours. Multiply 50 days. Let us know. Arc. I've uninstalled multiple times just to have a barrier of entry to avoid getting trapped again. Hey, an official minigame gets released in the next DLC. You should buy the DLC, rent a server for you and your friends, play it for 4 hours, and then uninstall but keep paying for the server for 2 years. Definitely haven't done this before. Mon is the minigame. That was a most for me. Get out of my head. A bit embarrassing. But The Sims 4. It's not the best game I've ever played, but it's easy to come back to. Edit I should really have said The Sims in general, because I dread to think how many hours I logged in Sims 2 and 3 in my teens. I ducking love Sims. Why is this embarrassing? You can get extremely creative, and it's only one of the best selling video game franchises of all time anyway with a massive mod community behind it. I've had more hours on the build mode in than actually playing the game, especially with 4. They should have just partnered again with Furniture makers like IKEA and TS2 instead of the Star Wars stuff. 
grass grows, birds fly and produce. I play TF2, love TF2, just wish there wasn't so many bots and official Valve servers. At least Faceit exists. Tell me more about Faceit, or I guess I could just Google it. Faceit is a service that offers private matchmaking. You queue through their client site and pick which maps you want. Then they make the teams and give you an IP you insert into the developer console and it's a private server. With everyone that queued for that lobby, it's like normal matchmaking, but it's entirely made to stop bots and cheaters from getting into your games. There's also missions and objectives you can complete for points, and you can spend those points on items for games that facet sponsors, like CSGO for example. Too long didn't read no bots cheats. Nice service. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 when I was 14. 108 D of gameplay. I hate to think how much time I committed to this. I would come home every day from school and play it till I went to bed. I would literally turn it off and get into bed. Then dream about the game. Enemy UAV spotted. Enemy AC 130 above. Friendly Predator missile inbound. Doom. But Fallout 4 feats catching up. Original Doom. That's awesome. Yeah. Classic 1993. Super Smash Brothers, same here. With switch locking hours, I see that I've accumulated over 1.5k hours. Final Fantasy X and Breath of the Wild both have thousands of hours invested. Help me please. I am playing through for the first time and I can't play Blitzball to save my life. Recruit brother. Pass to him as soon as you get the ball. Outswim the opponent. Then pass to Titus and swim up to the goal to shoot at zero distance. Repeating that strategy will take you as far as you need. Also save the game before the game lets you try to do the jack shot on the boat. And keep restarting replaying until you do it successfully. You only get one try. And if you fail, the game just continues. But if you succeed, Titus learns the jack shot from that point on which is really early in the game and way OP. I didn't like playing Blitzball until I got that trick and then I actually spent a ton of time playing it recreationally lol. Borderlands 2. There is at least two of us. Click subscribe. If you enjoyed this video.